Hey guys, it's Bob Morreale here with The Tuning School. Welcome back to our On The Dyno series. And on today's video, we're gonna be discussing how to know when you need to go to speed density. Let's get to it. All right, guys, so let's talk about speed density for a minute. And so most cars, most vehicles, most of your GMs and your Fords, they come with mass airflow sensors that are what we call the eyes of the system, meaning they're a sensor that sits somewhere in the intake track, typically after the air filter, and they actually are reading the airflow coming in, which gives the computer some great calculations to do the best job it can with fueling, give you the best drivability, and also help for weather corrections and things like that. However, there are times when you might say, hey, I think I need to go to speed density, which is when you need to eliminate the mass airflow sensor and the computer just relies on a MAP sensor or manifold absolute pressure sensor located in the intake manifold. In my experience, most of us try and jump to that point way too early. Uh, I don't know if it's just the thing that we just think, oh, that's gonna make better power or something, but here's the deal. It's generally done way too soon. And so I'm gonna give you an example, two examples today. The first one is gonna be an example of when you actually don't need to go to speed density, but you might think you do. And so um, first example is gonna be, I put a cam in my car, or I put a supercharger or a cam in a supercharger, so I must have to go speed density. You really do not. However, in this example, I actually was over on our community just yesterday and we were discussing with some of our students who said, hey, I've got uh, some problems and trying to tune my math on a cam swapped 5.3. I'm getting some wicked spikes and valleys in the math reading. So let's take a look and see. And so as you can tell, um, he put a little picture up here of his screen. You can see in the blue here, some really bad jaggedness. So we said, hey, uh, some of our other students chimed in and said, hey, can you post the log file? And I said, hey, it looks like you're getting a lot of turbulence. And so this is sometimes what leads people to go straight to speed density. The problem is if you do that, you're gonna lose some of that great drivability you want. And you have a big cam, so you kind of want the best drivability you can get. And so we start looking at it and investigating it a little bit more. And what we see here is a picture of his setup. And so I'm gonna zoom in. And now you can actually take a look and see. I don't see a mass airflow sensor here in the middle of the pipe. My eyes are drawn to the middle of the pipe because that's where it belongs. A good placement for a mass airflow sensor is gonna be right here in the middle of this straight section of the pipe. You want a couple of straight shots before and after, so it'll get a good reading with the least amount of turbulence. In this particular combo, what you're seeing here is it's actually at the very end of the pipe by where the air filter housing should be, but you're also gonna notice there is no air filter and there is no housing. And so what's actually going to happen here, especially with these older mass airflow sensors, it's gonna trick you into thinking this is gonna drive terrible, so I need to go speed density, but in reality, what you need is an air filter and a housing, and it'll um, create a stable airflow over that sensor. So if you look at the actual scan, this is, as, this is about as worse as I've seen. It's like the, probably one of the worst I've ever seen. So the airflow is here in blue coming off the mass airflow sensor. It should never be this jagged where it goes up and down, up and down. That is extreme turbulence. And as a result of that, you see the frequency, which is first in the system here, saying up and down, up and down. So the computer is calculating airflow values, huge swings, 28, 13, 29, 19, 17, it's terrible, which results in the fueling being all over the place. Because if you look here in orange, this is your injectors. So what's happening with them is they're being commanded up and down and up and down. So obviously this is gonna drive terribly, uh, perform terribly, etc. So the real solution is guys, uh, we actually have an example here, to retain in this particular instance and not go speed density. We've got this uh, JLT cold air intake. This is the math placement. And you'll notice it is also kind of near the filter, but it has a good filter and it has a proper diameter here. So it's not going to have an interruption of airflow, which is all over the place. So you, if the sensor is ever gonna be this close to a filter, it needs to have a proper filter. It cannot just be open element or you're gonna end up with problems like that. So guys, this is an example of when you really should try and actually clean it up, keep the math. And in his case, just going back to that picture real quick, I would absolutely just put the, put the math sensor straight in the middle of this pipe to clean up a lot of that turbulence even though he'll hopefully put a, a filter on the system. So that's an example of when you think you should, but you don't really need to, you just need to relocate the math. Option two is gonna be, I actually do need to go speed density. How do I know when I really, really need to go to speed density? Well, I've got an example here, which is a scan from our uh, 2006 Corvette. It's a, 2000, uh, it's a C6. And what we have in this scan is an example of a 416 cubic inch engine, pro-charged with a D1X, heads, cam, headers, and about 15 pounds of boost, roughly. Uh, as you can see, as the RPMs rise, your mass airflow sensor is reading pounds a minute, 55 pounds a minute, 
76, and we're up here over 86 pounds a minute of airflow. And we've got a pretty decent commanded and actual airflow here. So our wideband is saying, hey, we're 11.4, 11.5, you're commanding 11.7, so that's pretty tight. But here's the thing, the mass airflow sensor at this point is actually doing what we call maxing out. And so if you ever see this in a scan or in your tune file and it says, hey, the maximum I can read is this amount, because every mass airflow sensor will have a maximum it can read, you're actually gonna run out of math, which is what people are most scared of. But in this instance, this car makes like a thousand horsepower at the engine and around 850 or 900 at the wheels. So. Most of the cars that we see don't make that kind of power, and yet they're still trying to get to speed density. Whereas this is a, a rare instance where you might say, hey, this is maxing out the math. It cannot read any more airflow, or it's running out of frequency. It cannot see any more airflow, and therefore I need to go to speed density because at some point you're gonna have so much more airflow than the computer can actually see because the mass airflow sensor is out of its range that it will not inject the, amount, the correct amount of fuel it needs for that much more airflow, so you end up leaning out. That's a problem. That's what causes engine problems. You don't wanna pick up parts from the floor. That's an instance where I'd say, you know, you probably just need to go to speed density. Now, sometimes people are gonna say, hey, Bob, you don't need to do that. You just need to scale the math, scale the tune. Yes, you can do that, but I don't like to scale it more than 20 or 30%. And the reason being is it's like trying to put 10 pounds of potatoes into a five pound sack. You, you lose all your resolution, drivability goes way down, and you're probably better off just going to a proper speed density system anyway. So we're gonna touch on that real quick. What would I do in this instance if this was my car? I would actually put a three bar on it because we're kind of running out of, of range with our two bar map sensor and then I would convert it to a proper speed density system. You don't necessarily need that math anymore unless it has the intake air temperature sensor built into it. Most of them do. So you'll want to leave it in place, even though you're not necessarily reading from it anymore. From that point, you've got a lot of tuning to do guys. So a full speed density tune from the ground up, it's probably going to take you a full day if you don't have a lot of experience with it, maybe two or three to get the drivability dialed in. But from there, your fuel controls are fully based on what that map sensor is saying. Hey, what's the, what's the boost coming in today? What's my intake air temperatures? And it'll calculate properly. It'll give you really good control of your fueling based on your boost. So guys, I hope you've learned a little bit today. I hope you've learned when you really don't have to go to a speed density and a couple instances where you probably really should. So thanks for watching. And as always, stay tuned.